The Canon C70 is proof that Canon knows how to make a great camera. Just why don't they do it all the time though? I am Jaeger here on the Jaeger Shots Podcast and two things are really frustrating about Canon right now. First being is that the C70 is such a great camera, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say. Let's run down for those who don't know the C70 is Canon's smallest, newest entry into their cinema line of cameras coming in around 5,500, making it very, very comparable to the Red Komodo Dragon. I'll speak more about that in just a second. Here's some stats for you on the C70. For those that do not know about it, 35 millimeter sensor, 120p, add up to 4K, no 8K in there, uh, no internal RAW in there. I'm not too sure there's external RAW either. It's gonna be using an RF mount. And with that comes the option to use the RF or EF to RF mount adapter and a speed booster on your lenses. So F4 can become like an F2 and things like that. It's like weird voodoo magic that I still don't really understand. Built in ND filters, dual S card, SD card slots. No IBIS this time around. No built in EVF, you're gonna be using the flip out screen, which really makes it feel more like the hybrid R5, R6 with that flip out for some reason in my brain, but it's, it's not, it's a cinema camera. Um, no full size XLR inputs, it's gonna use the mini XLR inputs. And the thing is, it's it's super comparable kind of to the red, it just says about $500 price difference and it can use RF lenses and either similar batteries. And one thing that is just personal is like that red image looks a little bit more filmic cinematic to me and we don't really have words in the camera community to explain what these images look like like it's just softness but it's not a soft image it's not out of focus it's very sharp but i've already talked about komodo that videos up on the channel this is all about canon right now just what the hell is going on with them the c70 looks like it's going to be fantastic it might even tear some people away from the c500 and the uh, other cinema cameras that are significantly more price. So the other part of this, that's frustrating that yes, they can do it. The second part, I'll just go ahead and answer it. I don't think it's a thing that was done in a back fill, smoke fill room. I think it's just apathy. Canon seemingly seems to admit uh, that they kind of stumble into video being a big thing on their DSLRs and boy, they sure do treat it that way now. If we've seen with the R6 and the R5 and those issues have been well covered on the internet. And I do not subscribe to the logic that people have that they're cannibalizing the R5 to make you want to get the cinema cameras. Pause, pause for a second. There are people walking around who bought a Chevy in the 70s and insist that in 2020, the entire brand is tainted and cars don't even made the same way anymore. So why in the world would you get a camera for 3,800 plus tax insurance other things and then say, well, this doesn't work. Let me get their more expensive product. That'll be the one for me. I don't, I just don't see that. I and mean, when you get into the cinema line, you're really not dealing with grandma who's getting little Johnny a camera for Christmas. The cinema line people kind of know what the heck they're getting before they get that cinema camera. So I, you're not, you're not going to trick them into getting just whatever as this fly flies around my head right now. So I don't, I don't subscribe to that logic. I think it's just apathy that Canon has got for the hybrid shooters and their mirrorless cameras and DSLRs. And the focus is clearly video in a cinema and the focus as people have been saying, really is on the stills camera side. But when you do those stills cameras, here's the thing they gotta kind of factor in. We totally have hit diminishing returns on the still side of video cameras, well, not video cameras, but the still side of mirrorless and DSLR style cameras. That's something else we kind of gotta figure out a name for. Mirrorless, DSLR, everybody, I don't, they're, they're the same, not the same. Body is similar, but not really. It's smaller, there's no flange, it's just this. We gotta to come up with some better terms, but the mirrorless DSLR style cameras, the, the diminishing returns have kind of been around for a while. Especially with a still shot where you can manipulate colors and basically do all kinds of composites to the image. And it's like, you, it's indistinguishable unless you got a really crappy lens compared to some nice plastic or nice glass what camera even took a still shot. Video side isn't quite there yet. There's a lot of features under the hood that can be worked out. But when you compare like 
Sony doing camera camps for creators, and Canon just completely shown apathy for the video side and those mirrorless style bodies. It's kind of a night and day difference, and it really does show. So answering the question here, totally not Canon's priority to put good video in these DSLR mirrorless style cameras, which was just kind of a happy accident that happened <laughs> in the first place. Some reports were saying it was just something that some journalists might have needed some videos, so it's just a bunch of JPEGs or MPEGs just kind of thrown together in a row, and thus the video features came to these cameras. And that is still seemingly kind of the attitude towards these cameras, unfortunately. But hope is not lost. I absolutely believe this can get sorted out. And I mean, really, the footage is great off of the RFIs and RCs. All you really gotta do is get it a heck of a lot more reliable and useful. The footage is gorgeous, it's clean, okay? So it's, it's really not that far off. It's just, does Canon wanna continue this sort of apathy and foot dragging with these products? That is kind of the thing that remains to be seen. So that's my take on that. I'm gonna head on out of here. This is just an excerpt from the full podcast. I'm splicing this part in because I had to do a video part just to talk about this subject. The C70 looks absolutely amazing. I am not sure I want to get my hands on it or when I want to get my hands on it. And I mean, compared to the Komodo, like I said, I just really like that image slightly better. And that's very comparable since both can use the RF lenses and even EF lenses too. So, <clears throat> and the price range is 500 difference. But all right, that's, that's also for another day. I'm Jaeger from JaegerShots.com and the Jaeger Shots podcast where I talk about all the things going on and my little neck of the woods as well as camera stuff, anything camera related from the PC parts, which all that video is gonna be going up now. I also posted one not too long ago. Telling you about how you should document your life. Check that out on the YouTubes. Subscribe, leave a comment on the video here on YouTube. Listen to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. At, whew, where else am I on, on the web? Twitter at Jaeger Shots. <laughs> Instagram at Jaeger underscore shots because that lady will not respond to me so I can get that handle back on Instagram. <laughs> she doesn't even post. I don't know if she's still with it. All right. Everybody, until next time, uh, like, if you like, subscribe to Never Miss a Shot from JaegerShots.com.